This Road Dirt presentation is brought to you by Law Tigers, motorcycle lawyers. Find them at lawtigers.com. Hey everybody, Phil here with Road Dirt TV in the Road Dirt Garage today. We've got a project uh, we're going to work on today and I'm very excited because it's on my bike. So uh, <clears throat> we're going to actually replace the stock bars on my Road Glide. This is a 2017 Road Glide that we picked up uh, a couple months ago. Traded in the old Street Glide. We hated to see her go. But one of the things that I've missed being on this bike is the 12 inch KST bars that I had on my Street Glide. So uh, we've got a different model of KST bar we're gonna install on the Road Glide today. I went with the Outlaw model, which you'll see here shortly. Um, but I had the Mayhems on my Street Glide and they were also 12 inch bars. And me being six foot two, I really enjoyed the higher position of the bars. And you know, when I first started riding about four years ago uh, on street bikes, I had a good buddy who was on this exact model of a road glide and he had put 12 inch bars on there. So I said, well, Richard, what, what's, the, what's the purpose behind the higher bars? Besides obviously it looks kind of cool. Um, what is the, what's the deal? He said, well, and, and Richard's an engineer by trade. So he actually started sharing some of the geometric reasons why. And he, it turns out for me, he was exactly on point. And that is that when you're riding a touring bike of this size, we're talking about a lot of weight. I mean, wet weight, we can be over 900 pounds, almost a thousand pounds, if you've got somebody else on the back seat. And the lower the bars, the less maneuverability and leverage you've got when you're trying to turn that amount of weight. So when you extend your bars up, you're actually giving yourself an advantage when it comes to leverage within turns and being able to maneuver the bike. And I thought that was kind of interesting and he was exactly on point. Once I put my 12 inch bars on my street glide, I really could feel the difference and my confidence level went up. Yeah, they look cool, um, but uh, I really enjoyed the, the, the feel and the ride and at that higher position, my hands and shoulders really didn't get too tired or anything. So uh, no more talking, now let's get into the uh, nuts and bolts and bits and bites of this here and let's, let's go ahead and remove these. So before I get started, it's very important that when you begin a project like this, working on your bars, that you take some sort of covering, a rag or something like I've done here, you cover the gas tank so you don't scratch that. And then we're gonna be removing the hydraulics here. And to take the hydraulics off, you really wanna place them inside of a bag. I happen to have a couple of helmet bags here laying around that come in real handy for that, so that's what I'm gonna use for those. So um, the first thing we're gonna do is remove the hydraulics we're using a Torx 25 to take those off. And then we will uh, continue on and start working on the instrumentation panel. And a couple of the housings here, we'll take those off. Uh, then we're going to remove the uh, unplug the electronics. We'll take the bars off. We'll take the grips and throttle out. And then we'll come back in, install the wiring into the new bars, get the throttle and uh, the grips all positioned on those, and uh, kind of walk you through the whole install here. So uh, here we go. Okay, so we've removed the uh, right hydraulic housing for the front brake. Now we are taking off the left, which holds the clutch lever and clutch hydraulics. As you can see here, I've got my cell phone bracket in, on here as well. So we're gonna pull this off. And as you can see, as I mentioned, there's a small pin in here that we're gonna grind off because the KST bars do not have holes to accommodate this pin. So we'll cover that shortly. But once you remove the hardware, simply find some sort of bag. Again, these helmet bags came in real handy. Just uh, bag up all this Instrumentation here, wrap it up nice and tight and lay that to the side just to make sure that nothing gets scratched down below. Okay, our next step is to remove the instrument cluster here. So we're gonna take the Torx 25 and remove both of the side screws. So that one comes off and this one comes off here. Next, I'm taking a small Allen wrench. You could use a right angle pick and you just come in here under this tab right here and just press this little tab in and then the housing just pops right off like that. So that's all you really need to do to take that off. So now we're going to remove the instrument cluster and there is 
three plugs under here. There's the one main plug for your speedometer. We're gonna unplug that. So once we get the instrument cluster off, the next step is to disconnect the wiring that goes through the handlebars themselves. So you've got three small plugs here that basically have a small tab and you pop that tab and they'll pop right out like that. So you pop out these plugs out of the wiring harness. And then you have your throttle by wire down here, which is real tricky. And then you, there's a little tab here. You pop that tab and it just pops right out. So now the bars are free to come off of the bike. All right, so we're loosening these bolts here. Pulling these bad boys out to get the bars out. Drop down a little bit here. There we go. The other thing that uh, is recommended, once we take the bars off, you'll see down here this pin that comes from the factory that lines up with this hole here. KST does not accommodate for this hole or this pin, so we're actually gonna just drive this pin down flush with the aluminum housing for the bars. So we're moving the, we're moving the uh, electrical switch housing here from the handlebars. like that. Front one comes off like this. And you take a small flathead and basically once you pop that tab they just come right off like that and then the wiring harness pulls it out. So as you can see here, we've got the outlaw bars and we have pulled through the uh, left and right wiring harnesses as well as the throttle by wire. Um, and I tell you what, I've looked at videos online and I've tried to find tricks. And after a few phone calls with some buddies and some more online digging, I did find a way to do it without the little wiring harness pull, uh, come along that uh, KST does provide because I didn't get that with these bars here. So um, if you're searching for a pretty good trick uh, the, to get your wiring harnesses through this 90 degree turn and the bottom one and then you get it out, I'm going to show you what I did in the hopes that maybe this would help you uh, get the wiring harnesses through the back bars. It's, it's unfun. I'll just tell you that right now. It's not fun. <laughs> so. Uh, I'm going to put these down and I'm going to take the stock bars that I had used and just kind of show you. So basically, I've got a piece of small flexible chain here that's long enough to go in and around. And then I've got some very heavy gauge fishing wire that actually had been used uh, in retail for displays and whatnot. And I basically am just going to take a fisherman's knot here, wrap this around so it's looped into the chain, come down underneath, and I'm basically tying like you would tie a fly on a fly rod or a lure on some fishing line. Just gonna pull that taut air nice and tight. So I've got now, I've got the heavy chain and I've got this. This is actually gonna be used, the fishing line is gonna be used to pull the wiring harness through, but to get the fishing line through the bars, all you do is let gravity work for you. Start with the bar vertically like this, drop it down, make sure it doesn't come out of any of the holes, and just let it kind of weave its way through until 
drops out the center hole here. Once it gets out there, you pull it all the way through until your fishing line comes out the center hole here. And I basically did this for both sides. The left side, I only pulled one through, and the right side, I actually pulled two through. And instead of trying to pull both harnesses through on the right side, I did it one at a time. I pulled the, um, the electrical wire and harness for, through first on the right side, then the throttle by wire, which is obviously much much larger gauge. That, that allowed me to pull them through. Now the other trick is that when you connect this piece of the, of the fishing line to your wiring harness, you're gonna tie that same type of fishing knot and then you'll have the connectors hanging here. I ran some duct tape around that assembly so there was nothing that would catch in the corner of the 90 degree turn on the new bars. And then once that duct tape was there, you could use electrical tape too. Um, I actually took a rag and some little bit of WD-40 and I, write, I wiped down all of the vinyl wire covering with WD-40. This made the uh, harnesses want to slide through a lot easier. So it does take some pushing and pulling, but I'm hoping that the tricks that I discovered through using a chain to get the fishing line in and then to get the fishing line in using a little duct tape and WD-40 you could also use some uh, dishwashing soap or dishwashing liquid, anything that you could lubricate the outside of the wiring harness covers with. That's gonna help it get into these 90 degree turns and then hopefully get your plugs out of the center hole here. So hopefully it helps you guys out. All right, so we've got the uh, new bars ready to go on the bike. We've got the housing, the top of the housing off. Uh, another recommendation is to take your hydraulic lines for your clutch and your front brake and pull them around this housing and make sure they're sitting in the front so you've got plenty of extra cable for when you remount those. So we're simply going to just drop this, the bars in place here and get the wiring harnesses out of the way. And then we're going to put the bracket back on. And get some bolts in there. Snug until we get the bars positioned right and then we crank them down. All right, next we're gonna put our throttle grip on here. There's a notch at the end here, so you can you can just basically slide that bad boy on and get the, get the feel where it is. Then you take your uh, switch housing, slide that butt up against the grip here, and then we're going to reinstall our switch housing covers. So you basically just put the front and the rear on. Once they're lined up, we take our Torx wrench and all right. All right, left hand side, we've put just a touch of some uh, Loctite type glue in here that we can uh, hopefully use and just let it stick to down. We're gonna. Pop that baby all the way on. Again, make sure the switch housing is lined up with the edge of the grip. And we come in here with our switch housing covers. Those in place, front and rear. The nice thing about these Torx 20s is they actually have a little collar, so they don't pop off of these housings here. They're stuck in the housing, so good chance you won't lose those. All right, so we have taken our wiring harnesses here and we've plugged in the right side wiring controllers, the left side wiring controllers here, and the throttle by wire, which is connected down here. 
Um, so that is connected and we're good to go there. Our next step is to plug back in the two plugs that go into the back end of the instrumentation cluster. And just a footnote there, we actually, prior to this step, went ahead and triple checked to make sure that everything was functioning from the handlebars as far as the controllers and whatnot. So, let's go there. And we're gonna move the hydraulics out of the way. And get this instrument cluster back on. All right, so we've got the uh, Torx 25 in our hand here. We've just finalized positioning our hydraulic brackets, as well as just making sure that the switch housings were positioned well for uh, fat foams. Um, and we've removed the protective styrofoam here at the end. We've checked everything, we've plugged it all in. All the switches work, brake and clutch work. Uh, brake lights work, so we're uh, pretty set. So the last thing we're going to do is bolt down the instrumentation cluster and then snap the ignition housing back around here and we'll be pretty much done. So uh, this is kind of a, a quick uh, overview of installing some KST Outlaw 12-inch bars on a Road Glide special. Um, and I do want to say that we did a lot of investigative work on the web through YouTube. YouTube uh, KST has done a phenomenal job with their installation videos. And uh, I'll tell you straight up, we cheated big time and we watched that a few times to make sure we were following procedure and doing things the best way possible. Uh, so kudos to KST for a great job on their tutorials and their site. Uh, and uh, among other, other sites that we checked out for tips and tricks on pulling the wires through and things like that. So, um, be sure to uh, click the subscribe, give us a like on this video, and uh, check out our sponsors and our advertisers like uh, Law Tigers. And we really appreciate you guys taking the time to go all the way to the end of this video. Make sure to ride life.